So the first thing we need to do is we need to define a list of services. And to do this, you just type services. So services is going to contain all of the services that we want to define in this Docker file. And the first service that I need is my SQL DB. Okay, so I need a MySQL database instance to be running on this computer so that I can connect our application to it because I don't have MySQL installed on my computer. And with Docker, I don't really need to do that. I can just run a Docker container that is a MySQL Docker container, and then I'll have an instance of MySQL running on my computer without having it installed. It's just running on a container in an isolated environment, and then I can connect to it or I can map the port to it and I can connect to it just like it was installed on my computer but it's not really installed on my computer it's Docker that's running it as a container and for this MySQL DB I need an image so the image is the base image so where is this coming from and this is going to be MySQL so MySQL and I'm going to specify the version 8 so that's 8.0 these versions they're also called tags and you would see people who do this they would do like latest um, I guess it's fine but not really because when you do latest then whatever the latest is it's what it's going to give you and that can break your application so you always want to make sure you specify a specific version depending on what you're doing or what, whatever you need or what your requirement is and then i'm going to specify the container name so i'm going to do container underscore name and then i'm going to give this the name of my sql container Okay, because if you don't do that, then it's going to give you some random default name. And I don't want the default name. I want to be able to recognize the container that contains the MySQL instance. So I'm going to give it a name of MySQL container. That's going to be the name of the container. And then I need to specify a command, which is just going to set a plugin for me because I want to use MySQL default uh, native password. And this is going to be default dash authentication. So authentication dash plugin. And we're going to set this equal to MySQL underscore native underscore password. Okay, because I want to use my SQL native password. And for this, we need to specify this plugin. And then I'm going to specify restart. And this is only going to be restart unless it stops. So unless stop which means the only time we need to restart this container is when it's tapped. So if it's tapped, then we're going to rerun it. And then we're going to have the instance of MySQL again. And then the next thing I need to do is to specify the script that I want to run. So I'm going to say volumes, and then I'm going to point to our specific file. Now, remember, we have this file here. So this init.sql. And if you remember, it's this file here. So what I want to do is whenever I'm creating this MySQL instance, I want to point to this file so that you can execute this file so that you can create all of our stuff so the database the table and everything and then the volume is a list so i'm gonna go down tab over and then pass in the first item in the list and then i'm gonna point it to our file so here i'm gonna say db in it and then point it to the sql script and then i need to point this to forward slash docker dash entry point so entry point dash init db dot d forward slash zero underscore init dot sql okay so this is just something that you have to know whenever you need to have some script executed whenever you're creating a mysql container then you can use this location and then point your file to it so whatever file is mounted to this file this zero init dot sql it's just going to run everything that's inside of it and we're pointing to our file, which means it's going to put everything that we have in our file inside of that file so that when the instance is being created, then it will just run the script and then our database and table will be created. And then the next thing I want to specify is the location where I'm going to save everything. Because if we run the container like this, whenever we stop the container, all of the data will be lost and I don't want to lose all of the data. So I'm going to create another volume, which is really mapping location on the host computer to some location inside of the container. So I want to go to my home and then forward slash database. You can see it coming up here. And I want to mount this to var forward slash library forward slash MySQL. So whatever is going to be in MySQL and this var forward slash library forward slash MySQL, that's where MySQL is going to save all of our data. And we're mapping this to database. So whenever we stop this container, we can actually like get rid of the container. And if we rerun it again and we point it to that location, then it's going to have our data saved in there. So we won't lose everything every time we restart the container or we get rid of the container, at least on this computer. And then I'm going to specify some port. So I'm going to say port. And this is also an array. So I'm going to go down and put a dash and then I'm going to map 3306. So that's the default port for my SQL. So I'm going to map this port on the host computer, which is this computer that I'm using to the container, which is also going to be 3306. Because whenever you start an instance of MySQL, the default port is 3306. So I'm saying the 3306 on my computer 
map it to the 3306 in the container. And I also need to expose this port. So I'm going to say expose and then expose it as well. So I'm going to say dash 3306. This is also an array, so you have to put it down. So we expose the port from inside of the container and we also map it to our host, which is what we're doing on line 10 and 11. So now I need to specify some environment variable. And to do this, I'm just going to say environment. And then I'm going to go down. And the first one that I need to specify is the MySQL database. So I'm going to say MySQL underscore database. So this is going to be the database name that we want to start with whenever we start MySQL. So here I'm going to specify patient DB, if you guys remember. So that's the database that we're going to be working with. And then what I'm going to do is just copy this line and paste it down a few times. The second one that I need is going to be the user. So I'm going to delete until the E. So I'm going to delete everything here and then I'm going to pass in the user. So I'm going to say user. So that's the MySQL user. And I'm just going to change this to something like admin. Okay, so that's going to be the user that we want to work with. And then I'm going to specify the password. So I'm going to do here, I'm going to pass in password. And then I'm going to change this to something like let me in. So we're going to change this after because right now you can see that I'm hard coding all this stuff. So I don't want to do it like that. But for now, we're just going to keep it that way. And then later we're going to change it. I'm going to show you a different way we can do it. Um, and then we need to specify the root password. So I'm going to change this and go over here and then do root underscore password. And I'm also going to leave it to the same thing. So the root password is going to be let me in the password for the user we just created. So the admin user, it's also going to be let me in. And then I'm going to change this to a service tag. So I'm going to do service underscore tags because we can tag those services and then I'm going to pass dev here. So that's like the dev environment. Now I also need a name for the service. So I'm going to change everything here and then say name. And I'm going to change this to let's do my SQL DB. OK, so it has the same name as the service for the service name. And then the last thing I want to specify is a network. So I'm going to come here and say network and I'm going to specify a network here and I'm just going to come up with a name. So let's say internal net, for example. So that's the name of the network. Now I'm going to define this network. So I'm going to go over here and then say networks and then we're going to name our network. So that's the internal net. And then I'm going to give it a driver, which is going to be bridge. By default, it's going to be bridge anyway, but I just want to show you how we can work with networks and what network is doing is it's putting this service in a specific network. And if we want to connect two different containers together, they have to be on the same network. And if you remember, we're going to run our application inside of a container and the MySQL service that we have here, it's also going to be running in the container. So in order for us to be able to connect these two together, they have to be on the same network, which means you have to define a network and then put the two containers in the same network so I can connect them. And that's what I'm doing here. And like I said, it's really important that you have a basic understanding of Docker because otherwise you're really going to be confused here. But as I mentioned before, Docker was just going to allow you to run some services or some process in an isolated way on your computer. And that's what we're doing here. We're defining a service, which is the MySQL service. So as you can see here on line two, we say this is the name of the service. And then we specify the image, a name for the service, a command to run, to restart it if it's stop, and then we mount some volumes, which means we're mapping some location on the container to some location on our host computer. And it's not just any location. For example, this one is just mapping all the data on our home in the database folder. And then this other one is just running our script. So if you point something to zero underscore init.sql, then it's going to run whatever script that you pass it. And that's what we're doing here because we need to run our init.sql. And then we map some ports. So we map the port on the container to our host computer. And then we also expose that port as well. And then we specify some important environment variable. And that's the database to start with. So that's going to be the patient's database. And then the user, like another user, in addition to the root user. So and that's admin. And then we're passing in a password, which is let me in for both the root user and our user, which is admin. And then we give the service a tag and a name. And then we create a network, as you can see here. And then we define the network down here. So nothing really complicated if you have a basic understanding of Docker. But if you don't, then that's going to be really confusing to you because you won't understand what I'm talking about. So make sure you have some basic understanding of Docker. You have some background on Docker. Otherwise, like I said, you might just be confused. So this is going to represent our MySQL service. That's going to give us an instance of the MySQL database or the MySQL server on our computer. And then we're going to connect our application to it.